Hey class, we're going to start working on milestone one. I'm only going to do the cost classification tab on this video. I'll do another video for the other tabs. Our business is going to be a small business that manufactures pet collars, leashes, and harnesses. So we're going to be manufacturing. And so they give us a lot of information in milestone one that we're going to need, but we don't actually need this to do the first tab in the spreadsheet. We will need this for the second tab. So in this first tab, what we want to do is what they call cost classification. And what we need to do is we need to go through each row and put an X in the appropriate column for these four. Now you don't have to worry about the blue columns because they've already been done for us. So that's, that's great. You just need to do this area here bet between the direct materials and the period cost. All you have to do is put an X. You don't have to put any amounts. So you need to identify what kind of cost it is. So this is going to be manufacturing you know, dog or pet accessories. However, just let's think of an example you know, to use to kind of explain this that's not associated with, with, uh, with manufacturing the pet collars and stuff. What if we were manufacturing, I don't know, birdhouses? Well, we have two areas. We have the product cost. The product costs are what's associated with the manufacturing part. So those are going to be costs that are directly associated with making the birdhouses in our example. Um, however, you have to apply that to doing the pet accessories. The period costs are outside of that. So I'll use a couple of costs that aren't part of this project. So for example, marketing is an example of a period cost because it's not part of manufacturing. We don't have any ma marketing costs, so I'm using that to give you as an example. Our birdhouse factory though does have marketing costs, so we would, if we had uh, marketing costs, we would consider that a period cost. You can find discussions of all of these in the textbook, and I highly suggest that you go through the textbook and understand these different costs. Then you have to decide whether or not a costs are direct material, direct labor, overhead. Those are product costs. They're associated with manufacturing. So if we're using our um, example to explain this, for example, the birdhouse manufacturing, direct materials would be stuff that goes directly in the birdhouses that you're building. So that's a direct material. It, it ends up in the final product. So the boards and the wood and the glue and the nails, that would be direct materials for a birdhouse factory. Direct labor would be the people that build the birdhouses. So these are people that I call hands-on in the manufacturing part, putting things together. And then the overhead, that would be anything else in the manufacturing part that's not direct materials and direct labor. So to use an example that's not here, let's say you have um, a security guard that works at your birdhouse factory. We don't have security guards at this factory, that's why I'm using it as an example, but if you did have a security guard at your factory, that would be overhead because that person works at the factory, but he or she is not part of the direct materials or the direct labor. For that reason, they become overhead. In other words, you can only be three things if you're part of the manufacturing, a direct material, a direct labor, or an overhead. Everything else goes into overhead. If you're outside of the manufacturing process, such as the marketing is outside of manufacturing, then that would be a period cost. So go ahead and you just fill this out, put an X in each row to identify what you think, and then you'll get feedback to make corrections in the next milestone. 